I'm going to take you through a really exciting game from the fourth round of the FIDE World Cup between Yu Yangyi from China and Yan Yupomnishi from Russia. Both players really on excellent form at the moment. Uh, Nupomnishi is edging towards the top five in the world and Yu Yangyi, well, he had a superb um, tournament, rapid and blitz play tournament in St. Louis in the summer. Um, and, you know, he's also edging into the top 10 as well. So interesting to see what happens in this uh, round of 16 little mini matchup. Um, the first game, first classical game between these two players was a draw. This time uh, Yang Yi with the white pieces and Nippon Nishi, well, he likes to play sharp openings, very theoretical openings. In this case we've got the Grunfeld, he also plays the Nidorf. Uh, but, well, let's see what happens here. Um, Yang Yi goes for, well, you could say at the moment, one of the main lines occupying the center, very principled. But here is where he plays a move which is, well, I wouldn't say it's unusual, but it doesn't have a particularly good reputation, of course. You know, normal moves here are um, bishop b3, the most, most common move, but bishop b5 check actually has a reputation as a bit of a drawing move actually or at least it shouldn't present black with too many problems um, normal move here is castles but we have rook b1 from yang yi here um, and well this is already quite unusual uh, let's see what he has in mind after castles well He's just wants to give up that pawn on c3. Well, if that's taken straight away, then bishop d2 and, well, black's king would just be too weak in that position. So knight e5. And, well, uh, we've seen another very creative player here, Daniel Dubov from Russia, played castles against uh, the Englishman, David Howell. Um, Howell won that game, uh, played extremely well, uh, but Dubov really you know, threw everything at him. But instead of castles, we have an exchange on e5 from uh, Yu Yang Yi, and now he still didn't bother protecting that pawn, he simply castled here. And this bishop was pushed back. And now Nepo took the pawn on c3. Well, I think it's, it's obviously the principal move. Um, this has been played once before. Queen c2 played. Um, not a very convincing move. Bishop e3 played by Yang Yi. So this is obviously preparation. He'd played these moves pretty quickly. What has white got for the pawn? Well, he's got uh, the, the typical Grunfeld center with this pawn on d5, gives white space. The rook is on a semi-open file. This pawn is attacked and this bishop is kind of dangling a bit. Black's king side is, well, I'm not going to say vulnerable. I mean, if we consider the Black's King was kind of weak here, then we'd have to dismiss most Grunfeld positions for Black, actually, because it's normal that there's no King's Knight, for example, uh, to, to defend. Um, but, well, let's, let's, let's bear this in mind anyway. Uh, Nepo played queen a5. And now this move from Yang Yi, again, this must be preparation. He just went h4. So basically 
he's sort of ignoring the queen side and just going for it with h4, h5. And this reminds me of a, well, a couple of things. First of all, you might recall a wonderful game that Magnus Carlsen played against Alexander Grishuk in Stavanger in Nor the Norway chess tournament this year, where a different variation of the Grunfeld, however, there, there were some similarities. Carlsen had a pawn on d5, and at some moment he just went h4, h5, and then f4, f5, and just cracked open Grishuk's king. I mean, it was a, just a beautiful game. But, well, inevitably, let me be the first to say it, it's um, really reminiscent of quite a few Alpha Zero games where good old Harry gets rammed up the board and, you know, it, it could be very a very long-term attack, actually, with perhaps that pawn simply coming to h6 and cramping Black's king. Or it could be exchanging on g6, but... Anyway, we've seen it on many occasions with Alpha Zero. So Rook B8 um, played by Nepo at H5. It continues, and here we go. Uh, pawn to F4. So it is so much like that Carlson Grishuk game. I mean, there were there were different minor pieces on the board. There were two bishops against bishop and knight, but you know the 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 kingside pawn storm is very similar. And Nepo took pawn number two. Well, there's nothing immediate on for white, so maybe why not? So Yangi took on g6, and then played bishop g4. Well. The idea behind that is clear if bishop takes, bishop, queen takes, and the queen gets into the danger zone around black's king. And, well, it's still highly unclear, but basically the queen is where you want it, and black's queen, well, could be rather out of play. Okay, so after bishop g4, Nepo played a really committal move, and it's, it's a decent move, it's a good move, actually, f5 stopping well he didn't want that exchange but it's highly committal of course because it does open up black's king to a certain extent now at the moment you know white isn't really attacking and and yangi's next move bishop h3 seems well very modest indeed there's no big follow-up for white but let's see um okay how does black try to use this two port advantage could play b5 here that's an interesting move and simply allow this pawn to be taken but then you bring the queen back into the center and attack this one now this gets pretty random because you can see that's on pre's and but for the moment that bishop is locked out of the game and that's significant so b5 a pretty good option here but messy um, it's interesting that Nepo thought for only two and a half minutes over this next move. Queen a4. But this hands the initiative back to the Chinese player. Queens were exchanged. Okay, Nepo's two pawns up. You can afford to, to give one back. But suddenly, white's pieces leap into action. And... You know, this bishop and rook on the other side of the board, well, they're not contributing much to this game. Rook takes g6 threatened. If rook f6, then you can take on f5. I mean, white must be okay there. So king h7, reasonable. But now rook f3, the storm clouds are gathering White is massing his forces, ready to attack Black's king. And where are the defenders? So the rook is stepping up. Watch out for this one. Potentially, of course, the bishop is on prees as well. Here, I think Nepo makes a bad choice. He puts his bishop, and the bishop is attacked, and he puts the bishop back here. But 
it looks like he should put the bishop back on g7 to give the king some protection. So let's see what happens on bishop a5. Now, rook is attacked, comes into the middle. Well, you can see white's pieces look very impressive. Whereas there's only that rook around the king. And I mean, look at these bishops and the rook stuck on the other side of the board. This looks rather dubious for black. And I really like this. You could just recapture a pawn here, but actually after bishop c2 and then the bishop bounces back here, that would help black's defense. So rook g3 instead just doesn't bother with that pawn. So now what's the score? We've got, well, it's five black pawns against three white pawns, but this initiative, wow. This pawn is threatened. So rook g8 defends. And now again, not rook takes pawn, then bishop c2, but Yangi just plows on with f5. Now, if that's taken, let's just have a quick look at that. This shows what can happen to black's king. A check. If the king goes back, then we've got, well, there are, there are two different ways to do it, but rook h3. And the king gets done there. There was also bishop d4 check. Um, but rook h3 is better. Um, and after, yeah, rook check, if the king steps up, then the rook drops here and, well, with a continuing attack on the king. So f5 just played, g5. Now, here there's more than one move. Uh, Yang Yi took on e7. He could also play bishop g4 with the idea of rook h3, and that continues the attack. Um, so it's just gone downhill. More than one way to go here. And d6, that d pawn, so often when things go wrong for black in the Grunfeld, it's that d pawn that rams through the middle of the board. And in fact, yeah, the position is hopeless. Now that's a really nice move. The tactics all working in white's favor if that's taken then it just opens up this so bishop takes bishop just wins a piece uh, and what else we got um we've got bishop takes pawn but this actually loses to this check and the bishop hangs so e3 from nepo it's a bit desperate and the attack just rolls on so mate in one threatened. So rook g7 and this and rook h5 check. It's just the initiative just keeps rolling. And here we go. Ooh, really nasty threatening the rook. Threatening the bishop here. Now we need to just watch out for that e pawn. So in fact, everything is fine. Um, if e2, then the rook simply comes back to collect that pawn. And now Yang Yi finishes with a flourish. He played rook h8 check. And that was taken. Check. Could we take back? And bishop takes bishop. And Yang Yi is just a piece up for nothing. And well, there were a few more moves out of inertia. The king comes across just to make sure that that uh, e pawn is under lock and key. And here we go, bishop d7. Now this just makes sure that pawn here isn't happening, which would be uh, defended by that pawn, but forces the pawn to a3, and then the bishop cuts back, and there's a blockade here. So. That is absolutely hopeless. And here Nepo resigned. Well, th there really is nothing left at all for black. Um, for example, you could 
advance the g-pawn, uh, give a check, and then push the d-pawn down the board. That's one possible way to win, but there are many other ways to win. Well, that was a brilliant attacking game from Yu Yang Yi. Uh, so impressive the way he, he sees the initiative. And yeah, very cool. Star move, h4, h5, and then f4 uh, afterwards as well. Uh, brilliant stuff. So he has knocked out Yan Yipom Nishi, and he goes through to uh, the round of eight after this. Fantastic stuff. Remember, do like, comment, share, and subscribe. Free to subscribe, button's down there. And if you want to support us, help keep the lights on, then do check out uh, the links to PayPal and also patreon.com powerplaychess. Thanks for watching.